Section 5. Develop an Enemy AI. Over the course of this section, we are going to be creating the foundation of our enemy AI for this particular project. In the first video, we're going to be starting this process of creating an enemy of our very own. This enemy will be a melee enemy, which will be able to walk towards the player and attack him whenever he gets too close. He should be able to take damage from our weapons and die as well. And in the meantime, we'll learn a lot of different aspects about the Unity engine, which can be useful for when developing enemies of your very own. To get started building our enemy, the first thing we're going to need to do is have an enemy for our player to fight. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this here, and we're going back into our test bed level. And we're basically going to create one single enemy first, and then, just like we did previously, create a prefab where we can create as many enemies later on as we like. Now, to start off, we're going to first get some assets in order for us to prototype this enemy. And you know what we've been doing so far, so we're going to hit the asset store once again. I'm going to go ahead and go to the asset store tab. And this time we're going to decide what kind of enemy we want to have. Now, in my case, I'm going to use a zombie because it's a classic enemy. I'm going to go ahead and type the word zombie. And you'll see that I've already purchased this zombie here. And it's also free. So we're going to go ahead and use this zombie character. We're going to go ahead and hit the import button. And you'll see that this actually contains a lot of interesting stuff for us. It already contains some attack, falling back, idle, walk, walk in place animations. It's got a animator controller already built in, but we may build our own if we need to. We have a demo Unity file. We have materials, the textures, the actual model file itself. And there is already a prefab that's been included. Um, now, of course, we're going to want to customize it for our own project, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the import button. And that'll bring all those files into our project. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the asset store again, unmaximize. Let's go ahead and open up the zombie folder and open up the demo. Uh, go ahead and save. All right, so when we hit play, you'll see the zombies here. And it's animating. It starts off with an idol. It starts walking for us. It starts attacking. It falls. So perfect. We have a lot of things that we can make use of with this character. The zombie prefab that's been included already only has a transform and an animator associated with it. The child has all of the individual pieces. If you go to the current animator, you'll see that it currently has. Inside the animator toolbar, you can use the middle mouse clap button and drag in order to see things easier. And you'll see that it just goes from one state to the other without any kind of condition. We're obviously going to want to create our own when we start actually building our character. Let's go ahead and go back to our testbed level and we can go ahead and bring this zombie in. We're going to go to the project window and then open up the FPS game scenes folder and open up our test bed once again. From there, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the zombie prefab into our scene. And then let's go ahead and take a look to see how it relates to us within our scene. So if we look around, let's get a little closer to the guy. And he's already giving me the heebie jeebies. So by default, let's move him a little bit closer so we can see him a little bit easier. And we can go ahead and rotate him by clicking on the rotate tool and dragging it around. If you hold down the control key, it will snap to certain but to 15 degree increments by default, but you can set that yourself by going to edit and then selecting snap settings. You'll see that by default rotation is set to 15 degrees. 
Now, in our case, we don't want to use this built-in controller. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and we're going to create our own animator controller instead. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder inside of the FPS game folder, which I'm going to call animations. And then from within there, I'm going to right click and say create, and then select animator controller. We'll say uh, zombie FPS. Now within here, this is a blank animator. There's no states that have been attached to here by default. Uh, we'll go ahead and add in just one single state for right now. If I go to animations and we go to idle here, I'm going to drag and drop this in. Now we also need to go ahead and go to our animations folder and drag and drop the zombie FPS into the controller here. Now if we go ahead and play, we're already here, we're already at the zombie, and he is looking around, and uh, he is pretty scary. But here's the thing. Currently, bullets don't actually do anything to this guy. So we want to have it so that whenever we shoot him, he's going to take damage, and eventually that he's going to die. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video.